That's how what God does. He works it from the Sunday before when my wife ministered on a on bondage. And then Pastor Charles comes and he ministered on what we said to be free. And he emphasized some things around that. That's so amazing. That's so amazing. I don't know about you, but I've learned. I've learned from him. I've learned. And this morning, I want to I wanna go somewhere. And I know it's going to work together with tonight. Tonight, Sonette's going to minister to us on hearing God's voice. I might be wrong, but I, I think I, I'm more convinced That, uh, that there's not many people in the body of Christ that do hear the voice of God. So this morning, I want to take it somewhere else. I want to speak on what moves God to hear you. What is it that moves God to hear you? I'm going to read through a few scriptures, and then I want to give you a few prayer pointers. But I, I really pray this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus, that hearts will be receptive. That we will learn, not just here, that we will learn from, from this message. That we will come to a place of understanding. Psalm 34 from verse 17 to 20. You can put it a little bit softer for me, Scott. Psalm 34 from verse 17. When the righteous cry out for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their distress and troubles. Can I read it again? When the righteous cry out for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all, out of some, out of all their distresses and troubles. Now, you have to understand this. When we pray, why does God hear us? You have to understand what righteousness is in order for you to benefit from being righteous. You see, the biggest error we have done what we have in church is, we've taught self-righteousness subconsciously. I don't want to elaborate on, on self-righteousness. I think that's a sermon on its own. But I know that there's a thing that, that Christians use. And that is, God knows my heart. They do wrong things and then they say, or they, they try and rectify their excuse by saying, but God knows my heart. That's self-righteousness. If God says, that all our righteousness, or let me say this first. That scripture says that God hears us. 
we believe that God will hear us based on, hear me, how good we are. We believe that God will hear us on the basis of how good we are. Not understanding that to be righteous in the sight of God has nothing to do with you. If God says that all our righteousness is like filthy rags, Isaiah 64, all our righteousness is like filthy rags. It means this, your good standing, your perfection, or whatever you think you are before God, does not matter. Everything that is of you, He will never accept. It doesn't matter how pure you think you are. It doesn't matter how clean you think you are. It doesn't matter how perfect you think you are. Before the Lord, your righteousness will never be accepted. It will always be filthy rags. Always. So when we stand before God, God answers us because Jesus, say with me, Jesus has become my righteousness. God hears us because of Jesus. Nothing else. Right standing with God is not by us. I can never do anything in my life to be perfect before God. Never. You can never be so clean before God that whatever you say, that He will hear you. The only one that is pure, the only one that's perfect, the only one that's acceptable is Jesus Christ. He, the one that died on the cross for you and me. Jesus Christ. So when you stand before God, your reliance is on what Jesus did for you and me on the cross. That is what moves God to hear us. Because to Him, it would be like He's responding to Jesus. Can you imagine this? He responds to Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus is our righteousness. So when I stand before God and I cry to God, God will hear me on Jesus' account, not on my account. That's what righteousness is. Righteousness has nothing to do with you and me because Every right standing that we can afford will never ever be accepted on God. Are you with me? But that doesn't mean that we mustn't have good morals. That doesn't mean that we must have a good godly character. Please, this is not a license the righteousness that Jesus did for us on the cross is not a license for us to live as we want. It's not. But all of that is good. A good godly character, good godly morals, it's all good, but it's not enough. It's not enough. Let me, let me read this to you. Two men went up to the temple to pray before God. Let's read it. Luke 18. Luke 18 from verse 10. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. 
The Pharisee st stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men. Extortioners, unjust adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Verse 13, and a tax collector standing afar off. Would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I want us to get that into context, church. Because you, you are not allowed to call you a sinner anymore. That's something for another day. And this is what Jesus said regarding this tax collector, the sinner. Verse 14. He says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus was more pleased with the tax collector's prayer than he was with the one of the Pharisee. Why? Why? Because whenever you understand that God's heart that God hears you. If you can understand that God hears you simply by grace. And that grace given to you and me, His name is Jesus. If you can understand that, that God only hears you because of grace. His name is Jesus Christ. That represents the love of God. When you rely on grace, it proves that you understand what Jesus did for you on the cross. You've got it. But they that don't get it, they that don't get it, who's mixing doctrines of the flesh and the doctrines of God, they will still put themselves in the equation of how God reacts and how God responds. This guarantees that whatever you call God for concerning you, He will hear you. That's the good news. As long as Jesus is my righteousness, it's a guarantee. If I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, He will hear me as long as Jesus is my righteousness. He will hear me. He will hear me. Will you pray with me? Will you just raise your hands? Just raise your hands. Say after me, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the grace that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ. That through Him we can be in right standing with you. Today, O oh Lord, we know that we, when we call upon your name, we will be heard, not on our account, but on the account of Jesus Christ. Lord, hear me today as I pray. As I began to pursue your face. Even on the account of my family. Lord Jesus, hear me from heaven. Lift your, head, lift your, your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Thank you, Father, that you hear me. That you hear my prayers. That whenever I pray, you hear me, God. You have to open your mouth. 
You have to say something. You cannot do it in your mind. Open your mouth and start praying, church. On the account of Jesus, you hear me. Not on my account. Not of who I am. Not what I am. What Jesus did for me on the cross. Whenever I open my mouth and I pray unto you, you act as if it's Jesus praying because Jesus has become my righteousness. I am. My righteousness will always be with filthy rags before you. My righteousness will never be accepted unto you. But Jesus came and he made me becoming righteous because of his righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please understand this by the Spirit of God. Not only does righteousness restores us unto God. Not only does righteousness give us right standing with God. Not only does righteousness make us to be received by God. But righteousness also, righteousness also removes condemnation. I did not hear your aiming are very weak. Not only does righteousness do all the things for us, but it also removes our condemnation. It removes shame. It removes guilt. It takes it away. You see, when you are condemned... You have to understand this. When you are condemned, understand that your image, your image before God can be distorted. Not by what you did. That's the amazing part. Not by what you did. But by the way you look at yourself. By the way you look at yourself, your image before God can be distorted. I know that you've got it. You can distort your own image before God. Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. If God has qualified you and says, I will bless you. Not because of you, but because of my son. What my son has done. And you go and you say, I don't deserve it. I've heard many prayers. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your blessing, God. But I don't deserve it. If you stand and say, I don't deserve it because of what I did. I've seen how many people don't want to take communion because of what they did. Because they don't deserve communion. I don't deserve it because of what I've done, where I was. What you just have done, what you have said is this. Jesus, whatever you've done for me, it's cool. But I believe in my own righteousness. According to my own righteousness, I don't qualify. I don't qualify to be blessed. I don't qualify to be loved. Because I feel when I feel good, then I can receive your blessing. When I feel good about myself, then I can receive from you. But because I don't feel good about myself, right now, I don't feel good about myself. 
I'm not ready to receive. Not from you. I'm not good enough to receive from you. When you make me good, I'm not good enough. You can write this down. Condemnation is a sign of pride. Condemnation is a sign of pride. If I'm not condemned you as God. Remember when they brought the prostitute to Jesus. They all had stones in their hand, rocks. They were ready to destroy her, to kill her. And Jesus said, He who is without sin, go ahead, throw the first rock. What did they do? They just drop it and they left. Let's read. John 8, verse 10 and 11. When all of this was happening, Jesus was writing on the, on the ground. I've got my own revelation of what he, was, what he was writing on the ground, what he was doing on the ground. The Bible says he stooped down. The key, old King James he says he stooped down. He went down. And he was writing on the ground. I believe. He was just reversing the whole process back to where she was created. In the form of Adam. Before the breath came to restore her. He stooped down and he was riding on the ground. And when he raised his, himself up and he saw no one but the woman. He said to her, woman. Where are those, look at it, accusers. Where are the accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? Verse 11. She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. I don't condemn you. I know what, who you are. Can you imagine if, if God is man? We feel uncomfortable with a few balloons that looks like and then the Spirit of God came and he used that to bring an explanation. If that was not here, there would have been none. Religion is a bastard. He says, I don't condemn you. But I don't see that he's clapping his hands of a wrong living. I don't see him rejoicing of a wrong living. I don't see that he agrees that it's good, a wrong li living. No. I don't, ag I, I don't condemn you either, he says. And then he says something that is all powerful. I don't condemn you. He did not pray for her. He did not pray for her. He said to her, go. Go. I'm not condemning you. Go. And sin no more. There's no condemnation if there's no sin. 
You will never be condemned if there's no sin. You will never be guilty if there's no sin. You will never feel ashamed if there's no sin. He says, I don't condemn you. Go. He was not even minding the other guys that were standing there, the Pharisees. He was not even, st- he was not even minding them. Imagine that woman. Just think of it for a moment. If that woman that's been a prostitute, that, that's a job. That's what she do for a living. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you can grasp what I'm saying. It is those women that you don't want in a religious church because they're dirty. Religion will chase them away. Can you imagine how much demons she's carrying? Can you imagine how many soul ties she's made? Can you imagine how much, how many sicknesses and diseases she's got? You don't touch her with thongs. Jesus said, I don't condemn you. I know who you are. But I'm not going to condemn you. You are already going through the condemnation. You are already in the shame. You are already in the guilt. You are already being accused. But I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. Not go and carry on with your life. Not go and carry on what you do. This lady needs to go and get another job. She has to put in a CV and I don't know if she knows how. But imagine if this lady said, you know Jesus, my life is a mess. And I'm not deserving this. I have to live upright. I need to get into this right living for the next five years before I can receive what you've given. What would have happened? She would have missed the deliverance. And all Jesus did was He was showing her love. It is the love that Jesus showed her that delivered her. Condemnation is pride because it is self-qualification. I'm not good enough. Lift your hands. Pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus. Can I, can I hear your voice? Let's, let's mean business with God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Deliver me from self-righteousness. Open my eyes so that I can see the cross. Jesus, you took upon yourself all the shame, all the guilt that I'm experiencing today. I come and I nail it to the cross. I don't need to be ashamed anymore because I'm redeemed by you. I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus. I'm purified by your Holy Spirit. 
I'm sanctified by your word. Lord, change my subconsciousness. Never ever to walk in condemnation again. But that I may run to you. Even if I'm failing, I'm running to you. In times of need. In times of failure. In times of hurt. Even when I'm in sin. You don't want me to be far from you. You want me to be close to you. Because I cannot forgive myself. I cannot redeem myself. I cannot cleanse myself. If I don't run to you, who's going to help me? Who's going to help me, Lord? Jesus. You are my help. Deliver me from self-righteousness. Today I stand. And I do understand. That self-righteousness is pride. It's a manifestation of pride. Lord, it is me declaring this morning. That I stand correctly before you. I understand that I can only receive because of Jesus. Lord, set me free. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Freedom, Lord. No more self-righteousness. No more condemnation. No more shame. No more guilt. In the name of Jesus, I'm not praying for you. You pray for yourself. Lift your voice, church. Lift your voice. Ora shita kambos dosotara bakara dada sikriende ole resitra daga. Oh, self righteousness is no more part of my life. I don't need to be qualified. I don't need to be qualified to receive. I can receive because of the cross. Because of what you've done for me, Jesus, on the cross. I can have, I can receive, I can stand in right, standing with Father. I am purified, I am cleansed, I am redeemed by the cross, by the power of the Holy Spirit. My life is a joy, my life is a song, my life is excellent, my life is beautiful, not because of me. But because what you have done for me, what you have purposed on the cross, what you've done for me, God. Oh, shut on the game. You see, don't go and sit back on that church. If you are not engaging into that, if you are not actively engaging into God, with God, I'm asking you this morning, engage with God. It's for your own good. Engage with God. It's not for my good. Your engaging is for your good. I'm engaging for my good. Psalm 34 verse 17 says, The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears, and delivers them all from all of their troubles and their distresses. The righteous cries out. The righteous cries out. Listen to verse 18. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as having a contrite spirit. Now, you have to ask yourself, what is broken heartedness and what does it mean to have a crushed spirit, a contrite spirit? Two important things, very important. 
You see, to be broken hearted is not to go through disappointments. No. Can I say it again? To be broken hearted is not to be going through disappointments. No, no. A lot of people think because I'm in so much pain. Life is so unfair. Life is against me. This everyone is against me. I'm hurting so much that that means that you are broken hearted. No, it's not. That is not broken heartedness according to scripture. Because as a child of God, you are supposed to already know this, that you are rejected. They rejected Jesus. Who do you think you are that you will not be rejected? Who do I think am I that I will not be rejected? Can I give you good news? I don't know if you will accept it. But Father, your Father, your Mother, they will turn on you. Your husband, your wife, your children, they will turn on you. Family and friends will turn on you. I'm just giving you scripture. That will cause pain. That will cause disappointment rejection, hurt, call it. It will cause all of those things. But the Lord says, trust in me. Trust in me. He says, everyone else will disappoint you. Can I tell you, I've been maybe a disappointment to you, but listen, you've been a disappointment to me too. He says, trust in me. Because man will disappoint you, but I will never, ever, I will never, ever disappoint you. Can you say amen? amen? Jesus will never disappoint me. Jesus will never disappoint me. My wife will disappoint me. Come on. Come on, church. Help me. Help me. Are you too scared to say that your wife will disappoint you? Or your husband will disappoint you? Martin Sonnet will disappoint you. It's that. And vice versa. Just to keep the peace. But Jesus will never disappoint me. He will never disappoint me. I've been disappointed in my life. I can write books on disappointment. But he was always there. He never disappoints. Never, never. So if you are not walking in broken heartedness, it means that you put your trust in man and not in him. If you are not walking in broken heartedness, your confidence is in the wrong people. In the wrong person. So what does it mean to be broken hearted? As far as the Bible is concerned, broken heartedness means one that has realized. The person that has realized that without God, without God, there's a desperation for God. In their hearts. There's a desperation for God. And that desperation is what puts them in a state of brokenness. Without God. Without God in my life. There's a desperation for Him. For God. And that puts you 
into a state of brokenness. Can I be honest this morning? If you want to experience spiritual growth, if you really want to experience spiritual growth, you will not experience that by fasting. You will not experience it by praying for hours. If these two things are so good and so powerful and two things that we need to do, but without brokenness, they mean nothing. Your fasting becomes a diet. And your prayer time and laughter. If you don't live in that realm whereby, Lord, Lord Jesus, you are the air that I breathe. Jesus, you are the air that I breathe. My soul longs for you. I desire you, Jesus. I desire you, Father. I desire you, Holy Spirit, more than life. If I don't receive your touch, if I don't receive, and I can embrace what I receive, if I don't hear you, Lord, if I don't hear your voice, if I don't hear your word, I'm done. I'm done. I have no life in me. That is what being broken hearted according to scripture means. If you look at what Jesus, the way that Jesus prayed, if you look at the way that Jesus separated himself and prayed unto Father God, his whole posture, his whole way of doing it will make you doubt that he's God in the flesh. How he looked at the Father. How he says, God, Father, the Son doesn't do anything if I don't see you do it. I don't say anything if I don't hear you say it. The Son spends so much time pursuing the will of the Father. I'm talking about Jesus. Pursuing the will of the Father. Not my own will, Father, but yours. He said, I must be out, I must, my life must be about your business. Notice. Jesus was empty. Unless he serves the will of the Father. Unless he's serving his Father's purpose. It's empty. That's what being broken hearted according to Scripture means. See, because the heart's got two meanings in Scripture sometimes. Sometimes the heart speaks about the soul and other times he speaks about the spirit. I will explain it another day. I'm asking... The real question is this morning, the real question is, how much does your soul longs for God? Pastor Kubis explained to us the celebration of a car, of a vehicle, how that soul longs for a vehicle. And the celebration, the beautifying of that moment, the changing of an atmosphere of celebration because of a car. I'm asking, how much does your soul long for God? Some of us long for a car. Some of us long for a great marriage. Longing for Beautiful children longing for big houses, 
family houses, beach houses, material stuff, and not in the value of a relationship with Jesus Christ. True authentic brokenness, brokenness of the heart, is how much you long for Him. David says, Psalm 42, he says, As the deer pants, as the deer longs for the water brooks, so pants, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts, not my spirit. My soul. I don't need my spirit to be connected, to engaged, because it is engaged. I need to get my soul to understand engagement. I'm engaged in my soul. I saw the spirit speaks through things of the world. Many wake up in the morning, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. But there's no longing for him. Waking up and thanking for everything that you've got, but there's no longing for him. That's why you are not growing spiritually. There is no longing for God. That is why there is no spiritual manifestation in your life. A release of power. There is no longing for Him. When you long for God, if you even hear the name Jesus, you don't understand. Even if you hear the name Jesus, there is something happening in me. Tears are coming in my eyes. There's an acceleration of something that's just blowing inside of me. I just want to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Have you ever called on the name of Jesus, just Jesus, for more than an hour? Because that's the most beautiful name there is. It is by that name. It is by that name that I've got my living it's by that name that I'm blessed. It's by that name that I'm healthy. It's by that name that I'm married. It's by that name that I have. Not by other names. Not by Absa. Not by Sanctum. Not by VW. Not by Mazda. Not by Renegade Properties. Not by Entity Nissan. Not by Transnet. I was made righteous by that name. By the cross. My acceptance unto Papa is because of Jesus. No other name. No other name. They, I say no other name. There's no other name that can come close to that name because it's in that name that the power manifests. It's in that name that prophecies come. It's in that name that healings come. It's in that name that word of wisdom and knowledge and all kinds of signs and wonders and miracles take place. No other name. It is in that name that Papa is. <laughs> what a name. What a name. I say it again. When you long for God, even if you hear that name, Jesus, you want to cry because of how much you love Him. How much you love Him. I remember when the Lord was developing and still busy preparing me to stand before people. I struggled with that. 
could not stand before people, could not speak before people. But it took a preparation time. It took a time. How God has put me through crazy brokenness. How God sent me to Malawi. Just so that I can deal with the flesh. So that I can become so humble and deal with flesh. Not depending on flesh. He put me through brokenness. Every time God is about to lift me, to, 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 to take me somewhere, He introduced brokenness. My soul knows, my spirit knows. They come into a position themselves of agreement. And when God is lifting and when God is elevating my life, I know it when it happens. I know it. And I will yield myself to that. I will surrender myself to that. And when I come out of that place, out of that, my giftings are different. My understanding of God is different. And above all that, my intimacy with Him is different. My experience of His presence, the presence of God, is, is just different. It increases when I get out there. So now, that's brokenness. Brokenheartedness. But what does it mean to have a crushed spirit? What does it mean to have a crushed spirit? Let me tell you. There are people who have naturally a strong spirit. What does it mean? Having a strong spirit doesn't mean that you are immune to difficulties. Not. It doesn't mean that, but rather it signifies an inner power that drives you forward regardless of circumstances. Doesn't matter what comes my way, can go through. I'm going through that. That's a strong spirit. That's a strong spirit. Your spirit is tough. You can go through deep waters and you'll be fine. Whatever happens in your life, you will go through it because you've got a powerful spirit. But before God, I say again, but before God, my spirit cannot be like that. Before God, I cannot have that powerful spirit that goes through anything that comes my way because then I'll have no need of him. Some of you, hear me, some of you, and you hear what I'm saying? Some of you are so good in solving your own problems that you don't need God. And when you become like that, solving your own problems, it just says that you don't have a crushed spirit. It is not the devil that crushes your spirit. No one under the sun in the spirit dimension do have the power and the ability to crush your spirit but you. You can crush your own spirit. You can be broken before him. You can be Lord, God, Jesus, Without your spirit, I can do nothing. Sometimes when you have a strong spirit, it is your instinct. They call it sometimes gut feeling. It's your instinct. So if there's trouble, what you do is, you go quickly on a 10-day fast. 
fasting quickly for five days, six days, seven, ten days. Listen. Just because you are strong enough to fast for ten days doesn't mean that God wants that and wants you to do that. Because now, this is what Christians do. They formulate solutions. They formulate their own solutions. And they formulate it from their own spirits. I can do this. I can go through this. And they are not led by the Holy Spirit. Just because I can pray for eight hours consistently. Yes, I can. I can pray for eight hours consistently. Listen. Because I'm strong enough to be there. Just because you have a strong spirit. Hear me, hear me good this day, church. Hear me good. In your person, you can be too good for yourself. You can be too good for your own good. Write this down. Don't be tough before God. Don't be tough before God. Don't be tough before God. You heard that saying, saying, God helps those who help themselves. Have you heard that? Unscriptural. It's unscriptural. There's nothing, no scripture about that. It's not biblical. There's no Bible verse that says that. God doesn't need you to be strong. You hear what I'm saying? God doesn't need you to be strong. God doesn't need you to help you. If you can help yourself, if you can get yourself out of all your mess, why bother? You don't need him. The Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. It did not say let the weak become strong. He says, let the weak say I'm strong. Our declaration of strength is because the Lord Jesus is our strength. The joy of the Lord, our reliance on God, that is what gives us strength to push through my reliance on him lord without you i can do it i cannot do it without you i cannot do it lord i cannot do it and when i approach you i don't approach you strong i approach you weak because i am weak I said this so many times. I said this so many times. I'm not very fast in responding to much because I don't like to respond too quickly. I never do things just because of doing things. I don't. I never do things just because of doing things. I don't. I do things because I've got a confirmation. Many times there are things I need to do. I need to, I need to phone something of somebody. And I don't phone them. And I don't know why I don't phone them. And Rihanna would say to me, did you phone? I said, no, I did not phone. And I don't know why I did not phone. And then out of the blue, I'm phoning. And the moment I do that, 
it was the right moment. Hear me. I want you to hear me what I'm saying. I don't act based on me being a prophet, called by God as a prophet. I don't act based on that. It is not enough. It is not enough. It will not do the will of God. It's just not enough. Paul said, I served God with my spirit. Many of you, because you are too so tough for your own good, you've got no idea what your spirit is about. You don't know your inner man. You don't know the capabilities of your inner man. You don't understand the confessing of Holy Spirit and the confirming with your spirit who you are. You don't understand that. When you are acting along, is it with your spirit? That's what you do. Is it with your spirit or is it with your soul? Are you just pushing without God forward? Without Him being involved in your stuff, in your things? You don't know. Lift your hands. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you will give us this grace to be broken because it is in a brokenness that we are increased. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I understand brokenness. I understand brokenness of the soul. And I understand being crushed in spirit. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father. Give me a spirit of brokenness. Give me total reliance on you, God. That I may move with you. That I may walk with you. That I may manifest your virtues in my life. Remove all my self-strength. Everything that I boast on. Everything that I've done without your consent. Everything that I am without you. Remove that from me today, Father. That I can boast in things. That is yours. That I can understand today. That a crushed spirit is one that longs for you. A broken heartedness is one that longs for you. So many times I've taken a slip away. And I've got so lost. And I'm trying to hear your voice. I'm trying to do your work. And I don't. Because I try to solve my own problems. I'm sometimes too good for myself. And I forget about you. I forget that you are there. I forget my proclamation. I forget my declaration. That I've been redeemed by Jesus. That it's because of Jesus that I'm here. It's because of Jesus that I've got right standing with you. This is the word of the Lord to me. Put your name in there. This is the word of the Lord to Rihanna. This is the word of the Lord to Jackie. This is the word of the Lord to Krobus. It is not by might. It is not by power. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. Everything that you are is by His spirit. Everything that you are is by His spirit. I'm saying this to you. you. Hear me, church? Can you just, for a moment, lift your voice and, and give glory to His Holy Spirit? He's sweet. He's steadfast. 
He's faithful. He is glorious. The Holy Spirit is beautiful. His approach is tender. When He comes, it is swift. It is beautiful. It is overwhelming. It touches. It raises. It elaborates. It bolts. Oh, Shanda Kayo Sukrabe Hisitaranda, Holy Spirit. Without you, I'm nothing. Without you, I'm nothing. I need you so much. I need you in my life. I need you in my life. I need to hear you, Holy Spirit. Can you raise your voice? Come on, just pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Call on His name. Call on His name. He said that, you, that what you brought in this morning, you're not going to go out with that this morning. But somewhere you need to lift your voice and command those things that you come in, those destructions and those destroying stuff. And say to those things, listen, oh God. Look at me just quickly. I forgot this man's surname, but his name is Dick, an American preacher. He takes two chairs. And he puts one chair there, facing him, and he puts another chair here, facing that chair, and he goes and sit. He says, devil, come and sit. Now you come and sit, and you watch how I glorify God. You better say to your circumstance, come and sit. You better say to your sickness, come and sit. You better say to your conditions, come and sit and see how I will praise my God. I'm not preaching to you. I'm asking you to do it. If you don't have a circumstance, it's fine. But if you don't, I want to ask you to come to the front. I'll cast that demon out of you of lies. Take out another seat and tell your circumstance, come and sit here. You obstruction, you thief, you killer, you destroyer, you, you. Watch how I will serve my God. Watch how I will praise my Jesus. Watch how I will glorify my God. Oh, Shandaka, he cannot stand you serving God. He cannot stand you. Oh, Jesus. You will go with your sickness. You will go with your disease. And you will stay in the words of the doctor. And you will stay in the words of the physicians. And you will stay in the words of the pharmacists. And you will stay in the words of your medication. And you will be bound, 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 bound. Bound to those things until you pull out the chair and say, come and sit. I've got God business to do with you. I want to tell you who you are. Church. When the sun sets free, you are free indeed. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If you haven't maintained it in the past two weeks, you're not free. <clears throat> if we look at the medication, if you look at the diseases, if you look at the difficulties, I, I think you have to pull out more than one chair. And you have to address those things in the name of Jesus. You see, that the beauty is when God speaks, He speaks with purpose. He said, you will walk in with your stuff, you will leave without your stuff. He's not going to take your stuff away unless you speak to it. So if you walk out here and you are still depressed, still sick, still have this condition, still have that condition, still have that condition, 
You are obedient to God's word. God want to set you free. You want to set me free. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the glorious name of Jesus. In a beautiful, most beautiful name that there is. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Spirit of God. The awakening Spirit. The rising Spirit. You are beautifying lives. You are the comforter. You are the one that counsels. You are the greatest of greatest of greatest, the most beautiful intercessor that there is. You are. You are my strength. You are the one that makes me able. Without you, I cannot. Without you, I cannot even face these conditions. Without you, Holy Spirit, these things will stay obstacles in my life. But today I can look at them. I'm seated. And there's a chair. There's a chair. Oh, God. Can I ask you one? Can I ask you to bring me three or four or five chairs? Six. Six chairs. Can somebody help him, please? Thanks, uh, Brandon, let's make it more chairs, equal in number, equal in number. See, church, I can, I can walk away and say, it's okay. I cannot do that. I cannot do that. I just cannot just walk away. I just cannot walk away. I just cannot walk away. I love you too much. I'm more worried about you than you are worried about yourself. I think it's okay. Thank you. I'm not sure how far we have to put it apart. But this is your morning. Can we have another two chairs, please, Juan? This number is six. It's the number of man. It's the number of the devil. We're not going to give him any honor. We're going to keep it at seven. There's place for seven people to come and sit here. Meaning business with God about your life. You come and sit here and you allow your circumstances to sit opposite you where it is in the presence of the devil. And you and you and you just show you show that devil how you will praise God. I cannot do it for you. I really cannot do it for you. I really cannot do it for you. Oh, Rabba Sitranda Rake Siende. Oh, Shikatara Bakorobo Shikrade. I'm not going to lead you. You lead yourself. You do it yourself. Whatever it is, whatever the enemy is, is in his hand. Whatever he is busy and stealing and killing from you, it's today the day that the promise says when you walk out, you will not take it with. 
it will stay. It will be resolved. Stretch your hand out towards them. I don't want you to come under condemnation, church. I never, ever want you to come under come under condemnation. I want you to come under conviction. These opportunities does not just arise. Can I tell you a secret? If you walk out here and you want to do that at your house, it's not going to work. Because this is the moment. Roshikahanda if you want to come and sit here, just come and stand behind someone that already seated and say, give me an opportunity. It's my day. It's my time. It's my moment. It's time for me to be free. Dorokoshikate Barabo Sitradara. You've got a beautiful name, Jesus. It is by this name. It's by this name. Keep on praying. Don't stop. Don't wait for me. Don't wait for me. It's by this name, Jesus, that you set us free. It's by the name of Jesus. That we can experience the freedom is by your beautiful name, Jesus. That we can experience the redemption. It's by your name. You said that the enemy has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I, you said, I has come so that you can have life in the full, to the full. Till it overflows. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I just see the cross. I see the amazing words that you say on the cross. It is done. It is done. God. It is done. You don't have to live in those circumstances. You don't have to be in those positions. You don't have to go through the things. You don't have to. I've done it for you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Everyone, Father, that, that made this, this day a prophetic action. I pulled that chair in front of him and said, Satan, sit. Let me show you who I am. Let me show you how I worship my God. Let me show you how I declare, declare him above and above my circumstances. How I rejoice in him. How I declare his name over everything. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, this morning. Thank you, Jesus, this morning. That we will walk not, we will not walk out of this place with our baggage. 
We will not walk out of this place pulling this load, carrying this load, being slave to these things. We will not take it with us this morning. It is done. It is done by the power of the cross. I speak a release. I speak a release over everyone that sits here. Over everyone that, that, that is in this motion of finishing with their things. Finishing with stuff. Release. 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 Be free in Jesus' name. Be free. Live a life full of the conviction of, Lord, I love you. I love you tremendously. My whole life is about you. My soul longs for you. My heart screams. My being screams. My everything screams for you, God. Everything is for you, God. Oh, Jesus. Holy Spirit. Raboshi kreande sikrade. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, shadera garabondi askiriate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Come on, church. Come on, church. Don't let, don't let pride keep you. Don't let pride keep you. Don't let pride keep you. It's time for be freedom. It's time for freedom. My heart is with you. I cry with you this morning in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus for your freedom. Oh God. Father, we don't declare war. We declare praise. We declare thanksgiving. We declare, God, that you are good. We declare that our hearts are broken. This is brokenness. This is brokenness, God. Brokenness before you. Because without you, we cannot do this. Without you, God, without brokenness we cannot do this there's no man that can change these circumstances for somebody else there's no man only you only you God oh Rabbi Yassi on the Koros Kilerades Borasi Prahende Hallelujah. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. He 
it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Thank you, sweet, sweet, glorious Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just want to eat and drink of you. We just want to eat and drink of your Holy Spirit. We just eat and drink of you. Oh, we just eat and drink of you. We've got so much to give away. That is not from you. So much that we just don't let go of. That doesn't look like you. It doesn't sound like you. It doesn't act like you. And that's why we are here. We just give it. All these things that's standing in our way. These things that's blocking. All these things, Lord. Just loving you. Just committing our lives fully unto you. That without you, we cannot do it. Without you, Lord, there's no way. I'm done without you. I'm done without you. But when you come, when that exchange comes, when you give me that beauty for all my ashes, when you give me the healing for all my hurt, Father, we don't come and exchange this morning. We just give it. We just let go of everything that is there. That is stealing from us. Everything that is, maybe it's voices. Maybe it's wrong voices. That is constantly in, in our heads. Maybe it's just a lot of noise that's in our heads. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We will enjoy you, Jesus. We enjoy you, Jesus. We can see as we commit ourselves how we look these things in the eye that it doesn't have any other option than to bow. Bow the knee before us. Bow the knee before for me, Lord. Not by my power. Not by my strength. But by your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. That we can clean. That we can speak purification. Sanctification. Edification. God beauty, God beauty over our circumstances. Thank you, Lord, that we can color in your heart's desire for our lives using your fragrances, your colors, your beauties. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 
Oh, Jesus. Sweet, sweet, sweet Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. Roshi parahando koyo she machandes kileado. Troba yi si karaba su trotro boroku shikrande. We change it by your grace, by your mercy. We bring in the changes. We bring in the changes. Oh, Shindaka We just bring in the changes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare as we sit, we acknowledge our position in heavenly places. We acknowledge our kingship. We declare and we decree from our position because that's what kings do. We seal with the signet ring of Holy Spirit Spirit, we seal that this morning is a set free, practically, prophetically done in agreement with the work of the cross over our circumstances. We declare you, Jesus, as the most beautiful, most glorious. My heart, my soul longs for you. My being screams to be with you. My flesh submits to you. My spirit is engaged with heaven. My spirit is manifesting in my physical body the frequencies of heaven, the frequencies of Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah.